This is the shape of our country. This is our India. It measures some 2,000 miles from north to south, about 1,800 miles from east to west, and covers an area of over 12 lakh square miles, the seventh largest country in the world. It has a coastline of some 3,500 miles and a land frontier of nearly 9,500 miles. The face of our land has three marked features. The high mountain ranges of the Himalayas, the abode of snow, containing some of the highest peaks in the world, stretching for some 1,500 miles along our northern boundary. Flanked on the west by the western Ghats and on the east by the eastern Ghats, is the plateau of peninsular India. Wedged between these two are the wide horizon-touching plains, the great plains of northern India. The largest river flowing across our land is the Holy Ganga, running some 1,500 miles to the sea. Like her, fed by the Himalayan snows, are her tributaries, the Yamuna, the Gomati, the Ghagra, and the Ganda. To the west, there is the Sutlej, flowing into the Indus in Pakistan. Another great river, the mighty Brahmaputra, comes from the east. Going down south, first there is the Narmada and the Tapti, flowing west into the Arabian Sea, and the Mahanadi, flowing east into the Bay of Bengal. Rising in the western Ghats are the Godavari, the Krishna with its tributary, the Tungabhadra, and the Kaveri, the golden river of the south. The topography and the monsoon tropical climate determine our vegetation. They also determine our animal life. Again, climate and soil pattern our crops. Rice, wheat and millets, oil seeds, ground nuts and sugar cane tea, coffee, and tobacco, cotton, jute, and rubber, making ours a rich agricultural land. Below the surface, too, our land is rich. We have large deposits of coal and lignite, or brown coal, and one of the largest reserves of high-grade iron ore. One-third of the world's demand for manganese is met by India. Three-fourths of the world's mica comes from India. We have extensive reserves of gypsum for fertilizers, bauxite for aluminium, atomic minerals for nuclear energy, and untapped sources of oil. This, then, is the face of our land which nature gave us, the people of India, some 440 million, looking to a common goal of a free and prosperous land. To achieve this goal, to change the face of our land, we embarked in 1951 on our five-year plans. Our first task was to tame our mighty rivers, harness them for our benefit. Thus arose many irrigation and hydroelectric projects. The Bhakra Nangal for the parched plains and power-starved industries of the Punjab and Rajasthan. The Damodar Valley scheme for the mining and industrial areas of Bihar and West Bengal. The Tungabhadra for the farmers of Andhra Pradesh and Mysore. The Chambal for the arid lands of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. Hirakud in Orissa. Loa Bhavani in Madras. Mayurakshi in West Bengal. Umtru in Assam. Koina in Maharashtra. Kakrapar in Gujarat. Rihand in Uttar Pradesh. Malam Puja in Kerala. The Sindh Valley Scheme in Jammu and Kashmir projects which tap the wealth of our rivers. Fed by our mineral and power resources, the sinews of our growing industries, our factories, are further changing the face of India. Factories for fertilizers at Sindri, Nangal, Raurkela and Neveli, for steel at Jamshedpur, Bhilai, Durgapur and Raurkela, and numerous other industries like textiles, sugar, telephones, aircraft, machine tools, paper, cement, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, cars, bicycles, sewing machines, 
industries big and small, which make for a better and fuller life. Meanwhile, from Chitaranjan come the locomotives. From Perambur come the coaches. From Vishakhapatnam come the ships. All these help to build our communication, our railways, our highways, our skyways, our seaways. Feeding our messages to the remotest regions of our country are the post, telegraph and telephone services. While a vast radio network links the far-flung corners of our land, some 32 radio stations carry information and entertainment to the largest city and the humblest village alike. With 75% of India living in her villages, our community development and national extension programs are giving a new look to our countryside. Village panchayats are taking the lead, encouraging self-help and cooperation, improving agriculture through minor irrigation projects to provide water around the year. Better and more efficient implements, better methods of cultivation for better crops, better seeds and fertilizers to increase the yield, pest control to protect the crop, developing fruit cultivation, improving animal husbandry and poultry farming, promoting village industries and handicrafts to provide employment to thousands in rural areas, building village roads, fostering education, health and recreation, all these are changing the face of rural India. It is by us, the people of India, that this better life is planned. And for us, no matter where we live, north, south, east or west, under our five-year plans, we are changing the face of our ancient land, changing it into a progressive land, a richer land, promising a brighter future for all of us.